Hey everybody, welcome to the Anthony and Todd Show. My name is Trevor. I'm Vincent. Today we're going to be taking a look at the latest Red Vox project. Vox. You put a lot kerosene. of... Kerosene. A lot of emphasis on that X, so it's Vox. Voxy lady. Vox. Red Vox is a Staten Island indie rock band. Wait a minute, they're not those things you can get at McDonald's where you can rent a DVD for a night? You're... you're <laughs> I thought I thought you were the straight man, and then I do the dumb jokes, and then I, you have to like combat that with like normality. No, you're giving the intro now, so I can just mess around. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Redbox is a Staten Island indie rock band, mostly known for uh, being fronted by Twitch streamer and uh, YouTube gamer, uh, YouTube gaming star uh, Vinny Vine Sauce. I don't like the phrase I use. YouTube, YouTube gamer. <laughs> oh, look at me. I'm a YouTube gamer. Hey, YouTube. Check it out. My name is Vinny Vonson. Hey, guys. Check it out. I'm Vinny Vonson. You want to you you check out Machinima? Well, you can't. What it's happened closed. to Machinima? It closed down I know, because it, it got bought by at and And then they, they were like... They were going to combine... They combined it with something else. But and now were, they sell cell phones. <laughs> Vinny, as a Twitch streamer to me, is just seems like a very endearing person, and that's why I like enjoying his content because he just seems like a guy that not only does he do weird stuff, like he plays just like trash games and he scrolls the internet for all this like shit <laughs> game content, just like all these terrible games, all this trash. The most endearing thing I find about him is that he'll able to just be overwhelmed by stuff, but accept that he is overwhelmed and just continue to move forward and continue to move these strides. And I saw that he made music with Redbox, and I've never really checked them out before. And I thought, oh, they released a new album. We, we are critics with a capital uh, parentheses. <laughs> I thought, okay, this makes sense. Like, let's see how these two realms of my life combined. And for the most part, on this new record, Kerosene, a album that was intended to be like a five to six track EP and turned out into a full album. I'm, I'm impressed in some aspects, and I am disappointed in others. I'm not really disappointed. It's just like numb in others. If there's anything I can truly say that's like bad. It's just like empty, I guess. Um, this thing really reminds me of like Foo Fighters in one way or another because like I've never enjoyed a full Foo Fighters project. Like they have their like very solid, very great, catchy single moments, but there's also like a lot of filler to like every Foo Fighters project. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Um, but going past that, I think with this acoustic EP, um, I think there's actually a lot of elements that can work in like future projects. I love his acoustic performances and mixed with like synths that come in. I think that in future projects would be played up even more to create a lot more exciting moments. Mm -hmm. um, I think his writing, it feels very it, like it has the traits of that being overwhelmed, but also accepting that and kind of striving to move forward and just trying to get past that which also shows up in his, like, personality. So that's nice. Like, that goes full circle, but also seems like it can be written by anyone. Yeah, I was just going to say, the writing feels extremely um, generic Yeah. here. I think when you said you weren't disappointed, I was like, am I disappointed? And then I started to think about it. I was like, I don't, I don't think I'm disappointed because I wasn't expecting a ton. Yeah. It seems like, and this is obviously not always the case, there are, there are always exceptions, Um it seems like when somebody from one um, field kind of tries to branch out into another one, it doesn't always go the way that um, people want it to. Because I I know that the fans enjoy this music, yeah. Especially like you know the hardcore fans of Vinny Vine Sauce, I'm sure are like, this is my favorite record of all time, yeah. whatever. Uh, just because it's got his name attached to it, and it's gonna sell well because of the name recognition. Um, but well, well. Well, well, yeah, I mean, it's going to it's going to do it's going to do OK for yeah. itself because of the name recognition. But like, in all honesty, I just felt th this record to be pretty generic. Like you said, it could have been written by, by anybody. Anyone, yeah. yeah. And I I do see like points of Vinny's character across the record, especially like in his vocals. But in all honesty, if you have told me that. Dave Grohl's if you'd have told me that Obama was playing that guitar, I'd, I'd have believed you. <laughs> or if you'd have told me that, like, the Foo Fighters wrote that verse, or, like, Pearl Jam wrote that verse, I'd be like, okay. Yeah, like, one thing I can... <laughs> uh, one thing I can actually give a credit to the lyricism, throughout this entire thing, I find it to be, like, ridiculously catchy. 
I don't know what it is, and it, it's super repetitive with its with its like hooks. But I, I found it throughout the entire thing to be like it's very easy to sing along to. I just I just found it to be super catchy yeah, throughout. Yeah. Even though it's in the verses, there's not much unique content to it. It almost has a group vocal kind of quality. Yeah. Like obviously, group vocals have to be like catchy and easy to remember if you're gonna have multiple multiple people sing along to it and i i also like that like positive spin that he kind of puts on um being overwhelmed like especially in this opening track where he's like i've got a feeling that everything's gonna be okay yeah i'm like yeah i, I like that because if you'd have given this to i don't know like kurt cobain or something kurt cobain it, never, it, it wouldn't have been okay it, yeah because he's dead and it's not okay <laughs> you're just giving it to a corpse if you i mean <laughs> If you'd have, like, given this to any other, like, alternative rock band, they'd have been like, yeah, shit sucks. <laughs> I know. She left me roses <laughs> by the stairs. And now I'm going to go look out for UFOs. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's some moments throughout this entire thing I actually really enjoy. Heavy Little Heart. It has that, like, folky quality that I really mm -hmm. enjoy. That, like, campfire-like almost atmosphere to yeah. it. Um, moments like Leave Me Alone, very, like, isolate, desolate, in a sense, where he's just kind of proclaiming this, like, large amount of emotion. Um, both of these tracks, I, I feel like, especially with uh, Heavy Little Heart, the repetitiveness and also, like, the cheesiness actually helps out a lot. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it, it seems very pretty folky also makes it seem a little bit more unique in that realm, because folk music at times is super... I guess repetitive, but also kind of generic in a sense. And when you put it under a different lens, it's put it under that lens. I think it makes it seem more unique. If that makes that makes sense. Folk music in general. Folk me like in studying folk music. I've always found folk music is, um, I mean, obviously a lot of folk music is is very strophic, like yeah. just verse after verse, and they all sound the same but with different lyrics, but. I find that the melodies are extremely catchy, and that's what causes them to live on. Like, oh, my darling Clementine, you know, like, obviously the same verses sound the same over the course of the song, but, like, that main melody that you're singing along to is burned in your head forever once you hear it a couple times, you know? Um, but to have that, like, folk quality, I feel like that's the most important thing is, like, a really catchy melody. And, there, I mean, sometimes I think that Redbox hits, and sometimes I feel like they miss their mark seriously. Hit or miss. I, I guess, guess I <laughs> never miss, huh? Yeah. But, yeah, I think some of the moments I, can, I, I just don't like as much, like, Kerosene, Run mm -hmm. They Forget, kind of grungy in the sense. And I, I just don't think that works out. And in the, in the, almost in the character of... Vinny, but also in the sense of just the direction of this album, because the, the end, the beginning, the first track is very wholesome, and the re like the end of this album is very wholesome. But like yeah. those two tracks, they just feel like very rigged, very rough. Uh, like uh, it doesn't like play into that personality. Yeah, of wacky internet guy. Yeah, I think going on to the closer with Cemetery Windows, it's it's a more I think large sound that he's going for. It seems a little bit more intense, but it also reminds me of like a Sonic video game track. <laughs> <laughs> like Dude, a, Sonic games have some rockin' music. No, but like, like City Escape. Oh yeah. No, I meant like Sonic and like the Lord of the Ring, not Lord of the Rings, the, the Seven Secret Rings. Yeah, with the make me lose my balls. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> like it's big, it's bold, but it like it also seems flat. It's not. It's not like it's missing depth. What? Those are the lyrics. I know. That's like, because I know what you're talking about. It's the make me lose my balls. Make me lose my balls. <laughs> yeah. Sonic has lost his balls and we got to find them. If they're them. not visible on the model, then they're not real. <laughs> Jesus, let's just get to the rest of the review. Like, the things that I think this album is missing that showcase in Vinny's like, personality when he streams is the fact that it'll get... The fact that he's almost like a super fan of sorts, and he'll talk like a lot about like the police or King Gizzard, and one one time he t ridic he talked ridiculously long about like you two, like I think him is almost like fandom of sorts. I think it would be cool if that kind of bled through in a way, um, similar to like what Mark Kozlov does with his music. Like he's heavily centered, and he'll make reference to a lot of his music. I think that would be a good point for Vinny to come through with. Also, uh, weird shit. Like, yeah, that's yeah, that's like, like what I meant. That that personality's not showing through, and also like his musical, um, his musical influences 
don't show through. Yeah. This music sounds nothing like any of those influences Ye- that he mentioned. Yeah, like King Gizzard is like something he talks about a lot. This sounds like Foo Fighters. I I've, I don't think I've ever heard him talk about Foo Fighters. Oh, I mean, he's like, like he's the, I think he's a fan of Nirvana, and I think he's mentioned that before. Okay, but like, then that's like that's kind of okay. And like the, the two tracks I mentioned before, but like for the most part, this is a Foo Fighters record. <laughs> I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying that's the vibe it puts off. Yeah. Um, but I I think when I mean weird shit, I I I don't know. I just want to express that territory i feel like if he had like weirder points of lyricism to go off they don't have to be just like absurd and completely out of breach and being weird for being weird's sake but like finding some attachment from your own life and adding absurdity to it would be nice or like referencing like things in your life that are weird the fact that you make money from streaming video games like that would be a a, a, an example of a topic you can talk about and the absurdity of that topic because i think he works better when he's dealing with weirder stuff yeah and it doesn't have to be like cheesy like hey you guys remember that time when yeah you guys you guys like the room yeah you guys it, like danny DeVito? it like, doesn't, like, have, it doesn't to have to be good. like that but it can be i think it can be a little weirder than it is yeah like it's just a minor absurdity because it would make him seem more like a unique force because he's dealing with these minor absurdities yeah so yeah i'm 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 kind of uh mixed on this record i'm not disappointed by it because i didn't have, really have any expectations but and there wasn't anything like super bad on it. Everything on here needs needs work. There's good catchy moments throughout. Um, the writing's just pretty bland, and the writing's just pretty generic. So yeah, we're gonna leave it at that. If you want to watch another one of our reviews, I'm gonna put some on screen right now so you can check those out. If you want to listen to our podcast that we host every week called the Anthony and Todd Show, there's links down below to check that out. Also in the description, we have our very social media. So if you want to check us out on that, go right ahead. But until next time, guys, I've been Vincent. I'm Trevor, and see you, boys. Bye, everybody.